name is Katie Carson and I am the Duchess of Suds here at Royalty Soaps. Today we are going to be making Aurora Dreams and as I said in the last video this is actually my favorite high top of the month. That's right folks, I narrowed it down to one. It's got shimmer, it's got glimmer, it's got the galaxy, cosmo, swirly stardom effect on the inside, and crystals on the top. So what more could I possibly want? In the Cosmic Fairy Tale collection, this is sort of supposed to represent a castle of sorts. What kind of castle? Whose castle? That's up to you. It's just supposed to be castle reminiscent. So without further ado, let's make this soap. It is time to put our lye water solution into our oil. This recipe can be found where, kids? That's right, down in the description box below. Here we go, glug, glug, glug. I know someone's gonna ask me, why aren't you pouring it down the stick blender? Because I don't want to. <laughs> All right, let's blend up the sly water into our oils. Now because this soap is representative of the auroras, the heavens, it has lots of beautiful cosmic swirls. So the three colors we're gonna have the most of are black, blue, and purple, and then we're gonna have some accents of hot pink and turquoise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everyone thinks I know what I'm doing, but I'm not. I'm making it up as I go along, per usual. <laughs> Shh, don't say that out loud. Katie, you got that drip. Silence, brothers. <laughs> Silence, brothers. <laughs> this is the worst, worst lunch I ever had. <laughs> Your only job is to cook. Do you not realize that I have had diarrhea since Easter's? <laughs> If you guys don't know the reference, uh, we are talking about Nacho Libre, and if you extra don't know the reference now, you've never even heard of that movie, well... You've got some homework to do, young lady. That's right. Now, I've got about five million buckets here. I know this is gonna look good, though, so it's okay. Into this little tiny baby container, we're going to add our pink. This is Pretty Kitty from Mad Micah's. Then we have some blue Tide. This is also from Mad Micah's. For the purple color, we have Grape Ape. This is the best neon purple I've ever found bar none. We use this in the sugar plum fairy soap and I mean, these results speak for themselves. Now we have some ultramarine blue that is from TKB Trading and we have black oxide also from TKB Trading. If any of you soap makers out there have found a black mica that you think is pigmented like black oxide, please let me know. I really don't like using black oxide because the cleanup is a nightmare. We're actually using quite a lot of it this month though because it's the only thing I can find that makes it like really black soap. Okay, so let's blend up these colors real quick and then we'll add the fragrance soil. So I'm blending in my fragrance oil by hand. We're using Loving Spell by Nature's Garden. It's a sweet fruit smell, but it's not like overwhelming. It is a duplication of Love Spell by Victoria's Secret, but I think theirs smells more sugary, if that makes any sense. And this one smells a little more fruity. I have an idea for how to pour this to make it look like an actual galaxy. I've never seen it done before and I've never done it myself. So we're kind of taking a risk here, but I think it's gonna to pay off. One of the things that Kenny and I want to do in 2020 is experiment more with our designs. We want to do more stuff and um, we hope to do at least two videos a month where we just do a technique or something that we've never done before. If you're a soap maker and you want to grow your repertoire of soap techniques, there is a club called the Soap Challenge Club. It's hosted by Amy Warden of Great Cake Soap Works. I participate participated or somewhat participated in this quite a few years ago and I just got busy and um, I haven't done it in a long time just because uh, my business has taken over a good majority of my fun soaping time. But I think we might try to participate in that in 2020 just so we can try more fun stuff. Okay, so 
The purple and blue, I'm pouring into the black. And I think it's set up enough, so yeah, I can see. If it's sitting on top like this and not just glooping down to the bottom, it's set up enough. Just gonna pour in that blue here. Maybe pour some blue on this side as well. So the purple went in in a circle and the blue went in in the corners. I'm gonna let that sit in there all cozy-like for about, oh, a minute, 30 seconds, something like that. But after I let it sit for a while, we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna start pouring it into our two brambleberry molds. After this quick commercial break. So I'm gonna start by pouring a little bit down the length of the mold, just one pass. That already looks really good. <laughs> right, just another quick pass right here. Then I'm going to drop swirl this pink in on top. I'm actually gonna pull it a little closer. That's not really a drop swirl. Drop swirl, it goes all the way in. This is really kind of sitting on top. And I'm gonna puncture that layer with the next bit of soap from the big bucket. I'm gonna do the same with this blue tide, just kind of put it on top. Then we'll come in and puncture it, just like so. Some of it looks like it's gonna move to the sides a little bit, that's fine. The thing is, I just don't want the blue and pink to get overly swirled, but I don't want them sitting too close together so that there's like big thick lines of it. Kenneth, this looks like the roller skating rink <laughs> in Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That has such a groovy 90s vibe. It also looks like old theaters whenever they had kind of squiggly floors that were black. <laughs> yes! Okay, I'm gonna make one line of pink this time and we're gonna see if we can puncture that one really good because I want it to be squashed. Yeah, there we go. We're just gonna smash it on top. All right, I'm just gonna get this last little bit into here. We're not gonna put any hanger through it or anything. I think that's gonna be pretty pretty swirly as is. You can probably tell by seeing this blue and purple on this side, it's already got sort of an Aurora Borealis look to it. So we gonna leave it alone. And we're gonna mix up the soap frosting. I have filled up the piping bag and I have a gray and a black. And then we have our French star tip on top. Believe it or not, we have a French star on all of the soaps this month. <laughs> it wasn't purposeful, but it is by far my most versatile tip. And when you have soaps that have a lot of embeds on it, it doesn't take away from the embeds. It just kind of highlights them and that's why I like to use it. When we cut this piping, it should have a gray and black marbled appearance. So this soap, even though it's the second one you're seeing, is actually the first soap I designed in the collection. And even though I had a mood board and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with the collection at large, getting the finer details of each soap is always a little more tricky. But this one is the jumping off point. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted a galaxy looking soap and I knew I wanted both crystals and gemstones in incorporated with the galactic appearance. I wanted all of it in one. Now, as I've said before, I actually have all of 2020 picked out when it comes to themes. And I do this for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons we do it is so that we can purchase raw materials far enough in advance because sometimes suppliers, especially people that are selling to you wholesale, have a very long turnaround time. Soap has a very long cure time. You're always having to work a couple of months in advance. But for me, the main reason I did this is because creatively speaking, I need parameters. A lot of people would be helped by giving themselves parameters. Whenever I did creative writing in high school, they would give us a topic to write about. There was never a paper, not once, where you got to write
write about anything you wanted. They always told us, you know, write about your favorite food, write about your favorite whatever. And I had come home and I told my mom, I was like, I never get to write what I want. It's so limiting. But because I was learning and they were trying to teach me skills, being limited actually made me be more creative because it wasn't just, you know, walking around willy nilly trying to think of something. I already had a starting point. Now this doesn't mean that I don't still have spur of the moment soap designs. I do and those get created. But for core collections, having something already picked out is very helpful because it's my job. I cannot afford to have soapers block. I've got a whole team of people depending on me. I've got customers. And every month when my designs are due, I can't come up to them and say, well, I got nothing. I'm just going to have to wait for that spark. So one day, whenever I was really inspired, I mean like really inspired, I got on Pinterest and I made 12 different pin boards. I named them. I put in keywords. I pinned ideas. I wrote down any ideas I might have for the month. Even if it was like I knew one soap I was going to do, but I didn't know all the rest of them. So in saying all this, does that mean that every soap maker has to pick one theme and stick to it for their month? Absolutely not. But having some goals, having some deadlines, and having parameters for yourself creatively, that is something everyone should do. And make your business model and your creative model unique to your needs. You're going to have different needs than me because you're a different person. You've got your own unique individual business. With my piping done, I am now going to move on to my spritzer. So I'm going to use Sparkle Me Aqua. This matches the aqua on the inside of the soap. This is my absolute favorite fairy duster, even though it doesn't necessarily match everything because it is aqua. Perfect. And the silver rainbow eco glitter from Brambleberry is next. I'm putting my glitters on first because I don't want them to sit on top of my embeds. On top, I will be adding some crystal clear diamonds. Now, right here, they don't look crystal clear. They look a little bit cloudy, but just you wait till I spritz these with rubbing alcohol. You'll be able to see right through them. So I'm going to place them right on top. They are going to be a little cramped for room, so I'm putting them with their flat side next to each other. You can kind of already see the soap beneath the flat pieces if you look straight overhead. It looks so cool. It's like a magnifying glass. It's also funny because when soaps dry, of course they look a little more matte, but whenever these glycerin soaps get wet, they look shiny again. So some of these bars, even though they look pretty sitting on like your bathroom countertop actually look better whenever you're using them like for real whenever you're washing with them now I'm going to put on these amethyst we have some clear that fades into dark purple so it looks really accurate to a real amethyst each soap is going to get two of them, one on either side, and they're going to stick straight up. So this is kind of supposed to represent like a castle, a galactic castle. It's what I imagined our heroine to sort of be traveling to, to find the prince. Now these look pretty good, pretty darn good, but you know what? If we give it a little spritz, they will look a little better. <laughs> a lot clearer. They actually kind of look like diamonds now. Even if it looks a little cloudy still on camera, I promise in real life, it looks so clear. So we are going to wait 18 to 24 hours and then we will come back and chop up this soap after a quick commercial break. Okay guys, this is my favorite soap of the month. I haven't even cut it yet. I'm just making assumptions based on the side. It's gonna be good, I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on its side here. We're gonna line it up. Hopefully this will make some very smooth cuts on the inside. When in doubt, go a little bit slower. Sounded like a beautiful ukulele. Let's take a look at the inside. Oh 
my gosh. It's perfect. I think there's going to be plenty of people who think this looks like the Dark Crystal. I mean, it's got the Dark Crystal fragrance oil in it. Wow. That is stunning. Just love it. Also, the gray and black on top totally works. Okay, guys, the question of the day is, would you like to see more galactic-inspired soaps? I have a couple of months next year where I could sneak one in and it would still be applicable. So your vote actually matters. Be sure to click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen to let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Maybe leave us a comment down below. We're super close to 400,000. We might even hit it by the end of the year. I don't know, but it would be really cool if we did. So share the channel with your friends if you think they would enjoy it. If you want to purchase a bar of Aurora Dreams, it will be available with all the rest of the Cosmic Fairy Tale collection at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time on January 4th. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that is changing the background screen on your computer. <laughs> you know you've had that screen thing on there for two years. It's time for an upgrade. Get a picture of fancy Squidward of the Santa hat. Or maybe spread some Christmas cheer to someone who desperately needs it. But whatever you do, make sure that it's something fun and that you enjoy it thoroughly. And I will see you guys soon. So until then, bye for now. Wait, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>